Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Aquasphere, which is Stefan Feld's latest big, heavy monster Euro of a game. And I'm going to be doing a run through today, even though the game itself has not come out yet. I believe it will be coming out for S in 2014. I could be wrong about that. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But I just got back from Gen Con, and the wonderful folks at Tasty Minstrel Games gave me one of their prototype demo copies as I was walking out the door. And I was so excited, because I'm the biggest Feld fan in the universe. So I brought it back, Jen and I played it a bit, and now I'm going to be doing a run-through so folks can get an idea of what the game plays like. Although, like I said, it's not going to be widely available for a little while yet. And now, like I said, bear in mind, this is a prototype, so you know, understand the real game won't come with just you know cheaply printed out components. Components. These uh, these black things actually represent crystals. I think they're supposed to be like little crystalline tokens. These uh, yellow things are represent out represent time. So they're actually nice little cardboard punch out shits that look like little clocks. And most importantly, these purple discs are not purple discs. They are octopods. They're little octopus style tokens. I've seen pictures of them. They look very, very cool and cute. So you have to bear in mind with this prototype, you're kind of losing some of the flavor because I've just got prototype pieces. Oh, also, our submarines do not look like just big cubes. They actually look like little submarines. But still, <clears throat> this is less about the presentation and more about the gameplay. So let's jump right into it. Now, in this game, players are members of a two-man or woman research team that have come down to the bottom of the ocean to the aquasphere, which is a big <coughs> oh, excuse me, underwater research lab. It's kind of like the International Space Station because all sorts of competing interests come down here and do their own research. And so that's why players are actually competing. So at the beginning of the game, my two-man team and Jen's, I'm playing a two-player game today, I'm the yellow player, Jen is the blue player, has, you know, so our company, our country, whoever the heck we are, has sent down a scientist, here's my little scientist guy, and a programmer or engineer. And this two-man team is going to live for one month in the aquasphere. Uh, basically, we play this game over four rounds. Each round is one le week long. So we've got a month to do as much research as possible on these little black underwater crystals that are it's maybe some potential future energy source or, or who knows what. And so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to research the Dickens out of the place, working in tandem. That, if anything, the central theme of this game is these two completely different characters that you control having to coordinate all their actions because the one very much relies on what the other can do for them. Now, <clears throat> the... The aquasphere is largely automated. So, in addition to my to Jens and my programmers and Jens and my scientists, the place is also full of robots who can be programmed by the programmer to help the scientist do all the work he's going to do. Now, in this game, the robots are going to be represented by these little cubes. In the real game, they are actual proper robot meeples. But again, for my prototype, I don't have the robot meeples. I just have cubes that represent the robots. Right. Okay, is there anything else big picture wise? Oh, okay, also big picture wise, while my scientist is trying to do his research in all these different modules around the station, it's drawing the attention of underwater beasties, these octopods, which again, should look like little octopuses. And over time, these octopods will start to build up on the hull and they can really mess things up. <coughs> so that's something we have to worry about as well. While we're trying to make time doing research on all these crystals, as well as finding more time, doing additional research by getting these research cards, expanding our laboratory so we have more storage space. There's a whole bunch of stuff we're going to do, but I'm going to stop talking about doing this stuff and just get to doing it. Okay, so as part of setup, I ended up randomly getting my lab in wing D. And Jen's is over here in wing E. So that's why my scientist starts out in the D wing and Jen starts out over here in the E wing. And, let's see, at the beginning of the game, everybody gets four time tokens, which we both have. And there's a, there's a little card that it shows how to set the board up, where octopods are kind of infesting this station, and where, um, you know, how, many, how much resources are in our individual little wings when it starts out. And also, in a two-player game, where a couple of neutral players, 
these two red over here, uh, who are not representing the game. It's, it's, this is not like a full dummy system. Basically, over the course of the game, some neutral player docks their own submarines in all our various submarine docking places. So you can see two neutral submarines have already been docked. Now, my scientists and programmer, they came in on this submarine. So here we are in wing D and Jen's over here in wing E with her submarine, her scientist, and we're ready to get to work. Okay, enough preamble, let's start playing. I am the first player, let's look at my little board here. The board, as is so often the case with Steffendale Games, does a lot to tell you everything you need to know about playing the game. And on my turn, I have a choice. I can do A, choice A, or choice B. Those choices are, I can either put my programmer to work, the guy over here in kind of like the uh, central programming command, I can put him to work to program a robot so that that robot will help my scientists later, or I can put my scientist to work and have a robot help him do research. That's what you're going to do every turn. Either program a robot or use that robot with a scientist to do research. And like I said, we are going to, um, in, in a given round, do this several times until both players pass. And that represents one week. Uh, you know, where, where we've programmed a bunch of robots, done some research, and at the end of the week, we will do some intermediate scoring, depending on how well our research is done. We will do this over four rounds or four weeks, and at the end of the month, that's when um, it's time to leave, and we get our final scoring bonuses, which are all listed down here. Okay, sound good? Let's do it. So I'm the first player. Am I going to program a robot, or am I going to do have my scientists use a robot to do some work? Now. As part of setup, since I'm over here in D-Wing, and D-Wing has this little purple marker over here, every wing has a different, there's a green one, Jen had the blue one, there's an orange one. That meant, at the beginning, when, we, when my submarine came up, my scientists got off, uh, my programmer went over to the programming room, wherever that is, we found we have one robot already pre-programmed for us. You know, since my, I was in the purple wing, I have a purple robot programmed. So if I want, I can now either program an additional robot or I can use the robot that has already been provided us to do the action. Now this robot has been programmed, as you can see from this little icon, to help my scientists capture the octopods. And in my little wing, there is one octopod built up. <clears throat> so if I wanted, I could jump straight to using this robot that came with the place. But I'm not going to do that. I am instead going to program myself a different robot because I'm not jumping at the jumping and down to try and get a single octopod. I can ca capture, as evidenced here by my little lab, I can capture up to two octopods with one action. So it's kind of wasteful for me to spend a whole turn only getting one octopod. So I'm going to save that robot until more octopods built up. Or maybe, heck, I'll move over here where you can see there's a three octopods that have built up. So it'd be better for me to come over to these rooms and clear out octopods. So I could do that, but I think instead, no, nah, I am going to program a robot. So that means instead of using my scientist with a robot, I'm going to come over here to my programmer. Now, that our program, our, everybody's programmer starts in this bottom space, and from here, I could choose to either program a robot to help study crystals or to, well, in, in this starting, uh, this is the wild card. I can program a robot to help me program other robots. That's what this wild card symbol is. So I got a choice between these two things. I think, well, we're here to study crystals, right? So what the heck? Let's just jump right into it, I am going to go ahead and program a robot to help me study crystals. Right, okay, and now what that means is, so this programmer, it didn't cost me anything, he just spent his first day programming up a robot to help me do crystals, so I come back over here, these are all the robots that are available to me, and I'm going to grab my first one, this is the guy who's been programmed to help me study crystals. So I put it here in the crystal pot. And so now I've got two robots on deck, one to help me with octopods, one to help me with crystals. Now at no point can you have more than two oct or robots at the ready. So I can't program any more robots until my scientist uses one of these. All right, so that was my first turn. Now it is Jen's first turn. Let's see, and I believe she, now she started with a robot that would help her do some general purpose research. That's what this red, um, gear cog symbol is for? Let's see, would Jen want to do that? You know what? I think so. I think Jen, instead of having her programmer program another robot, you know, he could program for crystals or he could program for the wild card. Instead, Jen is going to use the starting robot she got. So that means she's going to do the other action where she takes her scientist 
And this scientist is going to bring along this robot who is programmed to help research. And now this scientist and this robot are going to do some research. Now what that means, general purpose research, not crystal research, which would mean collecting crystals but instead general purpose research. And what that means is Jen has the opportunity to get any of these randomly dispersed research cards. At the beginning of the game, there's six of them out there and they all give her different special abilities that she will have for the rest of the game. Now, here's the thing. She could um, do the research here in her own section of Aquasphere and that means she would get this research card. Or she could move, the, the robot and the scientist could move to any of the other places to get one of these other research cards. But here's the problem, to move from one section to another section costs time. As you can see right there, there um, you know, to move from where she started to over to the B section, she'd have to spend one time token. If she wanted to move further, she'd have to spend another time token to come over here. So. If Jen wants to save time, and at the beginning of the game she has four, she should probably just research where she is. And I think that's what she's gonna do. She is gonna research in her own section, and so she's not gonna move around, she's not gonna spend any time moving to other sections in the aquasphere, and she's gonna take this robot and put it in the command center of the E section. That's what you do. That is, you know, in fact, you know, the board reminds you, you specify the scientist, where is he gonna go, you know, anywhere on the station, and if you moved him from your, his current sector, you have to pay time. Then you put the helper robot in the command space, and then you actually do the thing. So I didn't move the scientist around, I kept him here, so I didn't want to spend any time, or Jen didn't want to spend any time. Activated the, the robot, and now Jen gets to do the action, which is she claims this research. Now, this research card basically is submarine research. Jen can now, for the rest of the game, is hence the infinity symbol, whenever she tries to get more submarines into the, uh, the station, it costs her half as much resources as normal. You know, it's the divided by two. So Jen is going to be the submarine queen because she got this special ability. All right. And that was her whole first turn. I programmed on my turn. Jen actually just got to work. Now some other stuff happened there. Because Jen now has a robot active in this section, Jen is considered to be in control of this section. And that will come into effect at the end of the week when we tally up to see who has most control over the entire uh, base. Because there is an area control majority. Um, if Jen manages to have more robots in command posts than I do, she'll score six points because she's in control of the entire station. Whereas if, um, you know, if I do, I can score six points. If, if we tie, then we each score three points. But as it is right now, Jen has taken the lead for control of the aquasphere. All right, so <clears throat> now it's my turn again. Let's see here. So now I cannot program any, well, I, if I program any more robots and from here I'd be able to program a submarine robot or a, uh, you know, a, what's it, the research robot like you saw what Jen just did. Jen got one for free. I could program another robot to do this, but here's my problem. I already have two programmed robots. If I program a third robot, I'll have to abandon one of these robots. Although it's not the end of the world, because if you basically junk one of your pre-programmed robots, you basically wipe their mind clean, you get some time or a crystal, your choice. But I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm actually gonna make use of my robots. I am going to, the robot I programmed last turn to help me with crystals, he's gonna help me with crystals. So this scientist and this crystal robot are going to collect crystals. Now, in my starter room, there's one crystal. My lab says I can hold a maximum of two crystals though. So I think what I'm gonna do I am actually going to, unlike Jen, who stayed in her own section, I am going to pay one of my time tokens to move my scientist from his starting location over here to wing C. And I'm going to come over here because there are two crystals in this area as opposed to one. And my little robot buddy who I programmed, who programmed help, he is going to establish command in this section. So I moved my scientist. I had to pay some time to do it. I installed the robot helper, and now I get to do the result, which is, well, I can take basically as many crystals as I can hold, which at the beginning of the game is exactly two. So I've just picked up two crystals. And crystals are, uh, two crystals at the end of the week is worth three points. Three crystals is worth six points. Four crystals is worth 10. Five, you know, so the more crystals you get, the more points they're worth. 
But crystals are also an absolutely essential resource for other reasons too. All right, so that was my turn. I used my program robot. Already I've forgotten something. Remember how on last turn, Jen, she had this little robot over here was you know ready to help her by getting a new special ability. I forgot. When you, every, I did everything right. When I take the robot, you know, I, I put him in the command section, but there's a little reminder here, and it's actually here on the board as well. It's reminding you that whenever you do a proper research action, you score points. That's what this little icon right here is. When you do the research action, you score points. How many points? Well, it's a picture of this little uh, hexagon. It's this many points. At the beginning of the game, if you do research early in the game, every time you do it, you score two points. So I totally forgot, Jen scored two points. And here's our point tracker um, around the programming section. So I totally forgot, Jen scored two points by doing her research. You will notice, gathering the crystals does not. There's no little icon telling me that I score points. So I just totally forgot about that on Jen's turn. She should have scored two points, which she now has. All right, so that was my second turn. I have collected some crystals. Jen's second turn. Now, she has no robot helpers. So that means her scientist can't get any work done because he cannot do anything by himself. He needs a robot helper. So that means Jen has to now program a robot. Let's see, what is she gonna program? So she could program like I did and you know, tra train a, a crystal helper robot, but I don't think she's going to. She's gonna go onto the deep end. She's gonna do this one. This is a wild card. This means, well, first of all, she has trained a robot. Right? So we take the robot and we put it in the wild card space. Now what that means is this is the smartest robot on Aquasphere. All the robots you train can do different things. This robot, and you know they all do different things to help the scientist wherever he is. This robot will help the scientist program another robot. See, normally you can only, only the programmer can program stuff. And he only has a few chances to program things before the week is out. But the programmer has programmed this robot to help the scientist program another robot. And that's really important because this programming board is a very harsh limiter. Now that I've done the, uh, what do you call it, the, the, the crystals, I, you notice from the arrows only move up, I am not capable of programming a wildcard robot like Jen did. You know, so you get limited as you move along. This wildcard robot that Jen just made might help her out quite a bit in the future. <clears throat> but anyway, that was Jen's turn. She programmed a, a, a helper robot to uh, program other robots. Okay, back to me, back to my turn. Now, I've got this robot who could help me get octopods. And wouldn't you know, I'm now in the room with three octopods. So, I believe I am now gonna have my, uh, mm, although, that's uh, kind of wasteful. Well, it's not the end of the world. Hmm. See, here's the thing. If wherever I go, if I have this little robot help me out, he will go into the command station. But since I already have a command station robot here, if I put another one, this guy will get kicked out into the holding area. And that means I've wasted an opportunity to establish more control because I, you know, I, I, I kind of, what I really want to do is I want to move someplace else, like over here where there are two octopods and then when I put my octopod robot over here, I'll have two controlling robots and I'll be in the lead for controlling the station. But here's the problem. This is the most expensive airlock in the place. It would cost me two time to move my scientists from here to here. So do I want to do that? Plus I have another problem. The more sections of the station I control, the more responsible I am for cleaning up the octopod menace. And so the more points I could lose if I don't. So you know what? I think even though it's a bit wasteful, I'm gonna stay in this room and I'm not, so I'm not gonna spend any time to move around and I'm gonna use my little robot here. And um, so that means it kicks out my other robot. And this was, remember, it was an octopod robot and I'm gonna do the octopod action. All right. And so that means I look at my station and during an octopod, I can pick up up to two. I could upgrade my station later so I could pick up more. Like if I grab this F upgrade, I could now get one, two, three octopods in a single action. But as it is right now, I can only get two. So I'm going to grab two octopods. And you'll notice there's a little score reminder. So as soon as you do that, as soon as you grab those octopods, you immediately score them. For two octopods, I score three points. So, and now these ones just go back to supply because I've scraped them off, they've gone back into the drink, everything's clean, I'm cleaning up the hull and all that stuff, and I scored three points for it. One, two, three, I'm in the lead, hooray.
And um, although, like I said, unfortunately, I did two actions in the same room. Really, you want to spread your actions around as much as possible, but I didn't do that. All right, and now I'm out of robots. So now it is Jen's turn again. So she could train another robot if she wanted, because now she's gone here, she could train a submarine robot or another. And remember, Jen likes submarines because she's got the special half price submarine thing. So I think, yeah, I think Jen is going to program another robot to help with submarines. So we take our second robot, we always go from left to right. And so now Jen has two programmed robots that will help her out in the future. Now it's my turn again. I have no robots, so my scientist can't do diddly or squat, which means I'm gonna have to program a robot myself. Now then, oh, oh, this is kind of a bummer. Oh, oh I could, wow, that's interesting. Hmm, let's see here. Uh, it's not as interesting I'd like though. <clears throat> Yeah, see, I'd love to be able to get, uh, you know, if, if I program to do submarines, fine, I can do a submarine like Jen is. I can move over here and I could program to get more, um, you know, to do research like Jen did in the first turn. Here's the problem, if I, if, well, actually, that's the thing, I don't want to do another action here because I'm just wasting all my robots, just dumping them into storage. So I think I am going to program to do some research of my own like Jen did, and that means I now have a research robot who will help me in the future. And now it's Jen's turn again. Let's see. She's got two robots. She cannot program any more robots unless she wants to dump one of them. Although dumping one of them to get more time isn't the end of the world. But I think Jen would now like to make for herself a... <clears throat> let's see here. A... Yeah, yeah. She's going to make her own submarine, I think. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So she is going to do a scientist action. Now... She's got to pick. Where does she want to? She has a submarine here. She cannot put, you can only put one submarine in each section. So over the course of the game, you could get all six submarines out, but they'd have to be in different areas of the station because she's already started in here. So she's going to have to move someplace. I think she will move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She is going to pay one time token to move her scientist from this section over to this section because it only takes one because she's going to build her submarine over here. Now, she deploys the little submarine helper robot. So now Jen is taking control of a second section of the board, and that's very nice for her. It cost her one time to get over there, and now she will get to build her second submarine. And remember, these look like actual submarine meeples in the real game. So now the dummy player, the neutral player, has already grabbed the first submarine slot, where you can see it only costs one time token to build your first submarine. So Jen's going to have to come over here to do the second one, which costs two time tokens to build a submarine. But here's the thing. Jen builds her submarines for half price. So it normally cost her two, but instead it only costs her one. And now she jumped in here. Well, there's a couple of reasons she came over here. One, she is taking control of this section, and this is a section that has no octopods. So Jen is not going to suffer any, um, you know, she's not going to lose any points for not cleaning up octopods for this section she controls. Plus she got her submarine and she got in early before the submarines get crazy expensive because they'll just get more and more expensive as the game goes on. So she got in early. All right, so that was Jen's next action. Now it's my turn again. So I could, in fact, I've got a robot so I could do research and I don't think I'd want to do research here, but I could move around to other sections to get any of these other research cards, which would score me some more points and stuff like that. Or I could train my final Pro, I, could, uh, train. I could program my last robot to either fight octopods or to get me more time. So those are my options. But you know what? I think you've got, I've shown you kind of the basics. Every turn, you program a robot or you use one of your programmed robots to do research. If you'd like to watch some more, if you'd like to see this week finish out and see the end of week score and maybe a bit of the second week, you can hit the button that's on screen right now to go to the extended playthrough or you can hit the other button and go straight to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.